Hey guys, welcome back to lesson four of your dog obedience trainer crash course. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is recall. Now, the reason why I wanted to do recall in its own lesson is because recall is one of the hardest things for people to teach their dogs. Um, and it takes the most amount of time to make sure that it's really, really solid, especially if you're somebody that doesn't use training tools. So there's a couple key things that we need to remember anytime that we're teaching our dog recall. The first thing is you need to make your recall exciting. If you think about 90% of the situations where we're going to be asking our dog to come to us, generally speaking, something rewarding is ending for the dog whether they're chasing something they shouldn't be, maybe they're getting into something they shouldn't be, maybe they need to come inside after playing outside, maybe they're about to go in their crate and you're about to leave for the day. It doesn't matter what the scenario is, very rarely are we recalling our dogs over to us just so that we can love on them and get them attention. Nine, like I said, nine times out of 10, something rewarding is ending. Therefore, if you expect your dog to leave something that's rewarding to them to come over to you just to get reprimanded, the odds of that happening are very, very slim. Which brings me to my second point. You never, ever, ever want to reprimand your dog after they have come to you, okay? When we reprimand our dog for coming to us, what they're learning is that coming to you when you call them is not a rewarding thing for them, okay? So this is where we're gonna get those dogs that just don't wanna come because they're afraid of what's gonna happen once they get to you. Therefore, when we're teaching our recall, we want to keep it as positive as possible. Now, the third thing to remember is this. When you are teaching the recall to your dog, if they do not respond the first time, do not sit there and keep calling them expecting a different outcome. This means that they, don't, they either don't understand what it is that you're expecting of them, or they just don't care enough to come or they've already learned that it's gonna be negative for them and they're making the conscious decision not to. Therefore, you continuing to say the cue over and over again is not gonna change any of those things. So while we're teaching the recall, it's especially important that we only say the cue once and we let them come to us. If your dog isn't responding to the recall cue, Instead of trying to say it again, I want you to do one of two things. Either A, I want you to just physically go over, hook the dog up onto a leash or something, and make them come with you. This is teaching them that, okay, well, you ignored me. That's fine. You're still going to have to do what I want. Let's go. Um, and that takes like the whole reprimand issue out of the picture. Whatever was rewarding to them is still ending. And they're figuring out, hmm, it would have been better for me to just come to my owner in the first place because that's gonna be rewarding, more rewarding than me having to get leashed up and pulled away from whatever, whatever I'm doing. The other thing you can do if your dog isn't listening to your recall cue the first time is use a lot of high-pitched noises and body movements. Um, pretty much every dog in the entire world responds well to high-pitched noises and excited movements. Um, dogs by nature are prey animals which means that anytime they see like a fast, fun movement or something like that, instinctually they're going to want to chase and or pursue that. So rather than sitting there and saying my cue over and over again, I'm gonna get really excited, I'm gonna use my body movement. I might even run in the opposite direction, um, but I'm using my movement to initiate their movement towards me. The other important thing to remember is that you never want to reward your dog for a recall until they have gotten all the way back to you. One really common mistake that I see um, is people will be doing recall with their dog. It'll be about 20 feet away. They'll call their dog and then they will start rewarding it for that recall the second that it turns around. This is a huge mistake because now your dog is learning that what their recall, what is gonna get them rewarded in their recall is simply turning and looking at you. That's not what we want, okay? We want to reward them after they have made it all the way back to us. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get Hershey up, and I'm going to show you how I would start my recall exercises um, and how I'm going to get him excited about it. A couple things that I want you to notice is how excited Hershey is the entire time that we're working. You want to see your dog's tail wagging. You want to see them enjoying it as you're working the recall. And that's how you know that they're finding it rewarding. So 
what we're going to do is we're just going to start out um, by using our body movement and excited noises to get our dog wanting to come to us. And it's going to look like this. Good boy. doing is throwing treats away from him and then I'm getting excited hey hey and I'm getting him to come back to me and he, yes thank you for that and even then even just as I'm hey hey you can see how her she is getting really excited so as you're doing this okay, no. maybe just a little bit too excited anyways like I was saying once we get our dog to the point where we know that they're going to be responsive and they're going to come all the way back to us when we're using our movements, that's when we're going to go ahead and add in our come cue. So I'm just, with Hershey, all I'm doing is just throwing some treats in the opposite direction to get them away from me. Get it. Hershey, hey, hey! Come! Good boy! Get it. Good boy. Get it. Hershey, hey, hey. Come. Good, come. Good boy. So as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm waiting to give him that cue until he's almost all the way to me. Um, and I know for a fact that he's gonna make it all the way back. So now what I've done is I've bought, I have created a very positive association between him leaving whatever it is that he was distracted by and coming back to me. And he knows that every single time he gets to me that it's going to be rewarding instead of him getting in trouble. So um, a finish recall should be a one command thing. Obviously, I understand that this was in a very low stimulation setting. However, that is how a healthy progression of a recall is going to look. You're going to start by just building a super positive association between them coming back to you no matter what, getting a food reward. When you feel confident that they are going to come all the way back to you, you'll start tying in your cue right before they get there and then reward them. And then finally, you'll have a completed recall at the end. Then all you're going to have to do is start adding more distractions and your distance and everything like that. You'll add those in slowly. However, if your recall doesn't look like that um, when you're working in a low stimulation area, if your dog isn't immediately running over to you when you say come, you probably should not start adding more things to that equation, right? Because during that time, Hershey's tail is wagging the whole time. It's super positive. He's getting a lot of um, reward for that. Um, and if your dog isn't acting like that and they're not immediately coming over and running to you like, okay, what do you want? Don't start adding other stuff to it. Wait until your dog is super responsive to you and that their tail is wagging the entire time before you start making it more difficult. Um, if you don't have a super strong recall like that and then you start adding stuff in, you're probably going to have to go back a few steps anyways, maybe go back to kindergarten. So it's very, very important that you do not progress until your distraction-free recall looks just like that, right? It should be a quick come and your dog should be willing to come and run right to you right then um, before you start adding anything else in. So this was the very, very basic way to start teaching your dog recall. It's super easy. Um, and it's super fun for your dog. So I hope you learned something new. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back for lesson five.